Good evening and welcome to the Finance Subcommittee meeting of the Brockton School Committee for Tuesday, May 4th, 2021. <clears throat> Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the Open Meeting Law's requirements that meetings be held in public places open and physically accessible to the public so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast Channel 98, and also the 1071 HD version. The public can access this meeting via the following link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. <clears throat> okay, first order of business. Let me call the roll to establish a quorum. Uh, D'Agostino is here. ASAC is not. Uh, Mrs. Mendez. Here. Minicello. Mr. Rodriguez. <coughs> Mrs. Sullivan. Here. Mr. Sullivan. Here. Okay, we are a quorum. <clears throat> do, 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 do. And on our finance committee, subcommittee agenda for the evening, we have the FY 2022 school department budget and agenda item number two, any other business to come before finance. So, Mr. So, Superintendent, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. So, um, as we start to wrap up, um, the superintendent's recommended budget, which becomes the school committee's recommended budget um, at the end, that's obviously um, recommended to the mayor, uh, which we're planning on doing uh, on May 18th. Uh, tonight, we wanted to pretty much uh, bring you everything to date uh, that we started working on back in, in March. So Aldo will give you an overview of um, the net school spending, uh, where the money's coming from, the difference between FY21 and FY22. Um, he'll go over revenues and expenses, and we'll also go over the non-net school spending, as you know, is, um, is pretty, most of it is transportation uh, and some personnel services. So. I'll let Alda go over that, and then we'll walk through, um, just highlight some of the things that we worked on as a finance subcommittee over the last um, three months. Good evening. What I've passed out to you tonight is uh, kind of a summation of what we've been discussing all of these weeks. The front page is a summary. Um, what I want to go over quickly is we have the net school and the non-net school spending, the two portions of our budget. So what I did is compared FY21 to the current FY22 that we've been working on. As you can see, FY21, we received $176.3 million from the mayor from the city as our um, education dollars. It comes in as Chapter 70. The city has a portion of it that covers health insurance and other costs, and then the rest comes to us. Um, we received for FY21 $4.1 million in an ESSER grant, which was used to help our budget. And um, in projecting for FY22, I used the house figure that came out a few weeks ago. And I went through my estimates of uh, all our costs compared to FY21. Um, the Schedule 19, which is the city side costs, still have some adjustments to make on health insurance. The CFO of the city and I are going over what the um, actuarialists are giving us for a rate of increase. We're talking around 3%. So in estimating from the house number, to where we'll end up with the Schedule 19, it looks like we'll have around 200 million that'll be coming towards the, to the school department. Again, a big chunk of that was the Student Opportunity Act um, that came in to fund us, and, and I, I factored out the cost for the charter school. So factoring in about that 200 million, and then we have the ESSER, I call it the ESSER, it's actually ESSER 2. Uh, any ESSER 1 money will roll over to ESSER 2 funds. Estimating we need about 5 million of that to meet all of the needs that we had discussed um, over the past number of weeks. Um, and we do have some additional grant funding coming in, so I factored that in. So we have about $205 million budget looking for FY22 has been presented with all of the positions and all the additional costs and all the programs. Um, the expenses are broken out below as we um, um, go through our budget. 
about 144 million in uh, personal services. Uh, for certified staff, about 32 million. For non-certified, our ordinary maintenance, which is all of our contracts and upkeep and, and repairs and materials and whatnot, 28.8 million. And then out-of-state travel, which it was 5,000 last year because um, due to COVID, nobody was traveling. But that's a contractual requirement with the BEA, so that's back at 20,000. So again, in rough numbers, I have the budget balanced. Um, uh, it's been the first time in many, many years. I've come here and said that we've been able to do that. Um, so we're, we're tapping it to some of the ESSER two funds with this budget, leaving the majority um, of the funds still in the ESSER two account. I mean, we haven't received all the funds yet, but we'll be looking to do um, a lot of our expenses like modular classrooms and whatnot or upgrades. We'll take from that and we're still waiting for ESSER three, which um, will be great for our budget. We can do a lot of building upgrades and whatnot with the ESSER three funds. So we're tied out at roughly 205 million, um, 205.3 on net school spending. And non-net, which is our, our busing and transportation of students, our community schools, our family outreach. Um, the city has asked me, the CFO of the city has asked me to um, reduce the amount of revenue he's given us right now. Um, he's still tying out his budget. He said we can work on increasing that later if we need it. So um, in doing so, I've, that's factored in the 10.5 million of revenues from the city. We have about 2.4 million um, in revenues that we'll get from Circuit Breaker and some other sources that we have that bring us in reimbursements from other cities. Um, that number should be pretty much set. We'll be good on that. And our expenses right now, because we've bought um, half of our bus fleet, um, which will be coming in in uh, June and July, um, we'll begin to use in September. Our, you'll notice our personnel costs went from 900,000 to 4.8 million. That's taking into all the costs of the drivers that we'll be using on those buses, the additional staff. And then meanwhile, the transportation costs are going from 14 million one down to 8 million. Again, we have buses, we're not um, going to outside sources for buses. So um, you'll see roughly about a, a $2 million savings there. Um, and that should go for that should hold and go forward uh, f uh, with our bus fleet as is. I projected about a million and a half, but I think we can get away maybe almost two million dollars savings in what we're doing here and our costs. So, and again, we're still if we do have additional costs, like I said, the CFO of the city and I have talked that you know we will bring those up at a later date if need be. But we feel comfortable with these figures. So right now we have a balanced you know uh, net school and a balanced non-net. Once the mayor gives us his final figure, then um, if we have to make any adjustments at that point, we can. Again, I've been balancing off of the 15.6 million of ESSER two money that's coming in, so I'm only at this for this budget pulling five of it. That leaves you know quite a bit of funds to be able to balance off with. So I think we're we're in very good shape. So that's a summary page. Page two is a detail of it. You've seen this every year. This is a detail of our all of our um, different line items, and again, this is. Um, this is a congregation of all of our line items because they're, they're in the end of year report or the uh, Department of Ed report, it's all broken out school by school. But in here you'll see um, you know, the fourth line down, additional personnel, seven million. That's all the discussions we've had on uh, the 75 teaching positions, the four or five administrative positions for those, the additional craftsmen, um, the additional uh, um, uh, custodians for Promise School and whatnot. Um, between that line four and line 20 are all of those positions. So we factored them all in the budget and there's funds in there factored in that in the event come September, we need a few more uh, staff or the superintendent has some changes to make. He's got the latitude to do it. In the past, we've always had between a half million on, on the top number and a three to 400,000 on the bottom number. We always carried close to a million dollars in there anyways. So um, like I said, we're in very good shape. We have brought um, substitute teacher line back to a million and a half dollars, which it had been for years that we cut back on. We brought back um, all of our program line items to where they, they were or where they should have been. And we added money back in for the intramural program. We um, you know, put funding back in, extracurricular. Um, I factored in the costs of, uh, of, of staff moving up in their, you know, their lanes and their columns and their contracts. You know, their longevity increases, everything's been factored in. So this 205 million ties to the front page. 
um, where we stand on our budget. We've, um, I think we're in very good shape. The, the, the next few pages are what you already had. I just reprinted them. All the discussions of every meeting that we've had so far have all the positions and items we want to do. So, um, you know, going forward, I'm just got to sharpen my pencil now with the CFO of the city and get this down to the, to the pennies so that we're completely in line with what the mayor is proposing and what we're getting. And by mid-May, we should hear from the Senate. Um, we've got a pretty good indication that um, if we're getting more money, great. But I, I don't see them really reducing what we're already um, been slotted to receive. Um, and when there's more grants coming every day, every other day, we're getting more grants showing up on our doorstep, which is great. Okay. So. Wonderful. Um, I, I know there's several questions in the room. Um, I wanted to jump in. Um, item 11, personal and professional and curriculum development. Yes. Zero. Um, I thought, I know I saw curriculum, um, and I think it was in the last budget meeting we had a yes. number for curriculum, and I thought I saw some PD numbers in there too. So can you kind of help us out with why that's a zero? Yes, because those are going to come out of ESSER 2 funds. Okay, I've so that's coming out of ESSER 2. those out of ESSER 2, exactly. Because those are going to be one-time purchases. Hopefully we buy this okay. curriculum and so. So anything that you've shown us in the past few weeks that's being funded out of ESSER 2 is not going to be in this? Correct. Okay. Correct. That's helpful. Yeah, most of ESSER 2 that you'll see is curriculum <clears throat> and modular classrooms. Okay. Curriculum, I, I see. The modular classrooms... Um, the city has some funds coming in. We're discussing how to use those funds. Okay. Um, and we have SR3 coming, which is going to be geared more towards, I think, buildings and maintenance. So we'll right. see what we can shift to that. And but those items, won't we won't see those in here because that's being kept separate. Okay. Exactly. That's fine. And then on the transportation side, and, and I, I bring this up because... As we know in the past, this has turned into a bit of a uh, political football and controversy. So I wanted to make sure that we're crystal clear on that. You had mentioned that the city CFO wanted to try to keep that number very tight. Um, are we underfunding transportation at this moment? No. Okay. I want to make sure because that obviously we know that's been a problem in the past and and we need to be very clear with the public about whether or not that is the case. So we are fully funding it based on our assumptions. And he's just saying if we ended up, for many reasons, right. needing a little more, we'll right. work that if, if out. If 1,000 more students show up September 1st, <clears throat> then we'll need some, probably need some assistance. But again, it depends on where they live. But That yes. makes sense. Right. right. Of course. More students than we planned on. Right. Of course. But so as of right now, with our current student projection, with our, everything we know, this is a fully funded transportation budget. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. I saw Mr. Minicello first. Yeah, two things, Aldo. Um, so when, when you mentioned the substitute teachers, um, where did you show that uh, we've, we've added to that or that we've, re we've restored that amount of money in, in the... Um, it's, on, it's on the multicolored page? On the multicolored page, on okay. that one there, yes. Okay. I was looking in the other sections, okay. Yes, that's... All right, because every year we... Every year we've we cut pay, that. You know, we, we steal from Peter to pay Paul. We cut that, and we always cut curriculum. I'm sorry, not curriculum, but uh, technology. Yes. Um, and, and so, I mean, I think that we're very good with regard to technology based on the savings in last year's uh, <clears throat> investment in, you know, having kids have one-to-one -one devices. So this is a very um, good place to be at this year. Um, with regard to transportation, um, you know, when you say fully funded, uh, in, in certain wards, we had removed certain uh, that we moved out basically the the, um, the one and a half to two. Has that been restored back? Is that what we're in this budget? Yes, we okay. we, we have a Fine. versa trans system that looks at where the students are. Okay, so 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 the children that were uh, temporarily removed for the greater distance have now been placed back. Yes, excellent. Okay, that's great. Um, and um, I would just like to say that this is a wonderful place to be and a place that we have not been in basically uh, over eight years and um, I, I would like to make sure that uh, the public knows that um, credit needs to go to 
former Superintendent Kathleen Smith, former Mayor Bill Carpenter, um, our state delegation, um, the city council who invested and provided <clears throat> this school committee and this uh, school system with the funds to hire experts, lawyers, to prepare the lawsuit that was prepared and basically was presented to uh, the state and they knew that we meant business that this school committee uh, traveled every week to different communities. We went to all of the big cities in the, in the Commonwealth of Mass and they all joined on and we collaboratively um, as, a, as a single force basically lobbied, petitioned, showed up at uh, the State House with buses of parents, teachers, students, uh, school committee people, city councilors, mayors, school personnel, uh, executive team members, and this is why we have this money today. And not be we were basically every budget cycle for the last eight years was a was a, a chore, was a a sin basically. And uh, luckily, they saw that we meant business, and this is the result. And uh, you know, this is, this is the best budget I've seen in my career as a school committee person uh, coming on my 14th year. And this is a very nice way to uh, start the school year. Um, again, um, there's no free ride here. The state is gonna be looking for results. We have to spend this money wisely. We cannot be like drunken sailors and think that, oh, there's money to burn, money to spend on frivolous things. No, it's focusing on what is gonna achieve student achievement for our, uh, our multiple <laughs> student body you know, from different places at different levels and really focusing and being smart with it and restoring the opportunities for these kids to get back into the swing of things in terms of their talent when it comes to arts, sports, activities, clubs at all levels that we had to cut you know, uh, the after school programs, uh, it, was, it was horrible, you know. Our main focus, we, we did what, the best we could to keep this, this thing afloat, but we tried not to take away from the kids and provide them with some constructive and safe opportunities after school, because in, in, in this world today, uh, you know, if, if, if idle hands bring about uh, chaos, so to speak, and uh, we want these kids focused on good things. Um, um, and you know what, I'm gonna take one minute to uh, give kudos to uh, school committee Azak's niece, who is a product of the Brockton Public Schools and who is going to be and has just chosen Harvard University to attend in the fall. So that goes to show you that you know, good things come from this school system. And, and I'll even pat my wife on the back who did a great job with my children and my son graduated and works for a great company in Boston from you know, the Eisenberg School of Management, the Honors College at UMass Amherst, scholarships. My other son got you know, into the school of his choice and they're doing great because of the Brockton Public Schools. So this is a heck of a school system uh, and we know how to tra train these students and provide and this is just gonna uh, be the, the, the impetus and the uh, and the shot of energy we need to really move it on to the next level. And, and this is a great budget. Aldo, you did a great job. And um, again, I can't thank our state delegation uh, more that provided the support on Beacon Hill. Every, every, every city councilor who supported us and, and gave us the money to invest in, that, in, the, in the lawsuit, and, and Mayor Rodriguez and Mayor Sullivan and Mayor Carpenter especially, uh, who joined with the other mayors and and and, and uh, you know we did a good job together and, and we got and this is the fruits of our labor so and Aldo kudos to you you were out there and talking the the budget talk with all the CFOs and the people on Beacon Hill the other senators and, and representatives really when you got up there and spoke to them about numbers they paid attention Aldo Petronio knows what he's doing and the Brockton Public Schools you know has, has a great uh, CFO and they all recognize that because you spelled it out for them and showed them exactly where their, where their loopholes were. You, you, you exposed them, you exposed them 
and showed them that, and shamed them into show, seeing how they were basically taking our money and putting it in the charter schools and deducting it from the money they stole from our low-income students. It was a shame. And, and, and you showed them what, where it was all happening, and they had nothing to say. So congratulations Thank to you. everyone. So. Excellent. OK. Um, anyone else? Mr. Sullivan. Hey, Judy, you were there. All the yeah. school committee people were all there. Everyone, everyone contributed. No, Every one of us were, were out there. And school no committee ran Brett Gormley. He was a big part of it as well. It Let's not forget and, Big Brett. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a team effort. And Richard Bath for a part Absolutely. of the time when Richard he was Bath, filling in yeah. for Lisa. Yeah, yeah. and all our school committee a, members. And, and A very long Absolutely. battle and a team fought yeah, battle. It was, it was a teamwork, but we did it. And look at what we got. This is great. All right, Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, I just want to echo what Mr. Minicello says. This is the best budget I've seen in the, the 10 or 12 years that I've been here. And thank you, Aldo, Mr. Superintendent. You did a great job. And thanks to everybody else. Thank you. Mrs. Sullivan. Yeah, I just wanted to add a couple of comments. Um, <clears throat> that Aldo Petronio was there every step of the way with Kathy Smith and the mayor and all. And without Aldo, you know, really it was a great job, Aldo, and you should be commended. Um, but we, we're us getting this money, we need to do something with the money that shows that we're improving scores, um, increasing, you know, improvement in the school where the state has called us out. Um, this kids succeeding here every day, like Mr. Minicello said with the Harvard. There's kids going to top colleges from here every year, right? And I don't think that gets out there enough with the positive things that our kids are doing. We used to have them come into the, some of the meetings and recognize them, but with COVID, we really haven't been able to, to do that. But there's amazing things that these kids are doing every day in this school district, even though it's, they're still hybrid. And um, it, it, with Teacher Appreciation Week, it really goes to the teachers. There's always, I always hear from people, especially this week, how great the teachers are here. And so they really need to be recognized. And be, without them, you know, we wouldn't have what we have today with these kids going to these colleges. And, and it's all along. It's elementary, middle, high school. I hear the teachers are great. It's not just at a certain school. Right. So I, I give the teachers a, a hand. And Absolutely. everyone else who, Aldo, the administration yeah. Yeah. that had a hand in this, now we still got work to yeah. do. We always said the best place for those kids is in front of their teachers, in yep. front of them in person. They're the best. We always, yep. we all support that. Yep. So that's that's can... that's what we want. And as soon as we can get these kids in here to basically talk to us and tell us about what they're doing and what they're up to, as soon as that can happen, that'd be great. Because like like Judy said, this is it, it, it's been too long that we haven't had that interaction we need to right, we, need, we need we need to try to get back to normal kind of normal producing, <laughs> especially yep. right now right yep well and on that i wasn't going to mention this yet but um the superintendent and i've talked about um for the same thing we want to get students in and engaging with us um, we'll probably uh quarterly start at least and hopefully the next vice chair will continue this um, but quarterly we want to start having students come to a policy subcommittee meeting and talking to us about any different, any number of topics. I mean, it can be about clubs they, they enjoy, clubs they'd like to see, a sport or academics. I mean, so it'll be a, an open opportunity for um, students to come in and engage with the committee. So I hadn't really mentioned that to the committee yet, but since you brought it up, I figured I'd throw it out there as, as let you know that that's something that Mike and I have been planning on, um, on doing. Uh, hopefully we want to try and, you know, do one of those before uh, this year is out maybe in June at, at our, one of our June meetings. So um, at any rate, I do, I don't want to rush everybody, but I want to keep us going because we've got, you know, a, a full slate of meetings this evening. Um, anyone else want to comment on this matter? No? All right. I'll make one final comment adding on to what Mr. Minicello mentioned um, about Ms. Asak's niece. Um, your sister, uh, Counselor Asak, showed me, I think it was on Instagram, um, but um, 
Eunice had done this, this posting, I think, on Instagram, and it was a thing showing all these BPS students as well as the colleges they're going to, and you look through, and yeah, maybe not, they're not all big name, but many of them are big name, impressive colleges. The kids from Brock and I, despite the budgets and the cuts and everything we've been dealing with, um, they are going places and they're going to big places and excelling and um, you know, with, with this budget, we'll even be able to do even more with all of our students and hopefully add more students to that, a wonderful list like that um, in the future. So um, at any rate, okay, so if there's nothing else on this agenda item. I'm going to say one more thing, a private thing, but when my son was offered his job at the company he's with now, which is a huge company, what his, what the, the the people that were interviewing him said when he was driving home, he couldn't believe that he got the call and they asked him to take the job over kids from Bentley, BC, Bryant. They didn't say to him, Matt, we need a minute man. They said, Matt, we could use a boxer in here at this company. And he was like floored. Wow. He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm coming. So That's great. So they knew he was from Brockton and they right. were like, we want a boxer in here, so that's just a private little tidbit, but he was so proud on the way home, and he called his mother and father. I bet, and I bet you and Patty were very <laughs> proud, too. Absolutely. As you should be. So. Rockton Public Schools does a great job. Yes, we do. Um, okay, so um, with that, and I'll just make a note, and we'll, we'll repeat this in the full meeting, but um, we do have our, our public hearing for May 11th um, will be our public hearing on this budget. I think we. Uh, oh, oh! Did we move that? Oh. Huh. Oh, all right. Um, I stand corrected. May eighteenth. <laughs> okay. I know. I know. In here, I, I didn't pull. I didn't make that up. <laughs> okay. So I will make a note that we need to move that so I can make sure that we we do that tonight. All right. Very good. Um, other business for finance, anything? Okay, seeing no other business for finance, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Minicello, properly seconded by Mr. Sullivan. I'll call the roll. D'Agostino is a yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. He says yes. <laughs> Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Right. Did I just hear someone say yes on Zoom? Yeah, it's Tony. Oh, it was Tony. Yeah, I, I told you he said yes. He did say yes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>